Here we're going to look at wave behaviour and focus on refraction and reflection. You need to be able to state the laws of reflection and refraction. Use the law of refraction, otherwise known as Snell's law, to predict the direction of light and apply refraction and the law of refraction to optical fibres. So thinking about a light then, from a light bulb, we usually draw it as a straight line. Light travels in straight lines at speeds of up to 300 million meters per second, which is in a vacuum. And then when it hits an object, it can either be reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. And this is how objects appear to us in our eye. This is how they appear different colors. This is how we see through things. So thinking about reflection, the simplest example is a plain mirror. Looking in a plain mirror, we see a reflection. We see an image formed of an object in that mirror. This is called a virtual image because the image appears to come from behind the mirror. This is due to the rays of light being reflected off the object, striking the mirror and then being reflected back into our eye. And this happens all along the mirror. The image appears to come from behind the mirror, at exactly the same distance behind as the object is in front of it. Here is the important law. The law of reflection states that the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection. Drawing this out a bit more simply, we have our incident ray striking at an angle of theta 1, or the angle of instance, and our reflected ray travelling away at theta 2, or angle of reflection. These two angles are always the same no matter what object light is striking. If the object is not smooth we get something called diffuse reflection. Still the angle of reflection equals the angle of instance. However because the angle of instance is constantly changing so is the angle of reflection. This is why we only really see reflections in plane mirrors because the reflected beams do not appear to come from the same place. They will appear to come from different angles. We also get, due to transmission and absorption, different colours. So if light is instant on black paper, the black absorbs pretty much the entire spectrum of colour and emits very little, or reflects very little. Whereas if it hits white paper, all of the spectrum of colours can be reflected and so the object appears white. Similarly for blue, it absorbs everything except blue, which it reflects. Yellow absorbs everything except yellow, which it reflects. So now thinking about refraction. If we have a beam of light striking a glass block, as we rotate our ray box, as we did in class, around, we'll notice that as the angle of instance increases, so does the angle of refraction. However, they're not exactly the same. So the basics. Again, we have our angle of incidence here. If any was reflected, we've had, we'd have an angle of reflection coming up here, but it would maintain the same law of reflection i.e. the angle of instance would be equal to the angle of reflection. The angle of refraction is this angle here, so between the normal and the refracted ray. And as the light leaves the glass block, it is going to be refracted again, because remember from GCC, refraction happens when light changes medium, so it goes from one medium of a certain density to another medium of a different density. Snell noticed that the angle of instance was not equal to the angle of refraction, however they were proportional and as one changed the other changed accordingly. He discovered that the ratio of the sine of the two angles was the same when light was entering a certain medium or a certain material. So if we imagine a wavefront striking a transition between air and glass, the red line being the wavefront, as one part of the wavefront starts to hit the glass, it starts to slow down. 
until the entire wave is in the glass block. Snell's law simply states that the refractive index of the first medium times the sine of the angle of incidence will be equal to the refractive index of the second medium times the sine of the refracted angle. This is also the ratio of these speeds. So the refractive index of an object can be defined as the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in that medium. So refraction is actually how we know that there's an entire spectrum of colour within white light and all the colours are contained within it. As white light enters a glass prism, each component of the white light is refracted differently due to the different wavelengths. Okay, So the shorter the wavelength, the more that piece of light will be refracted. And this is how Newton saw the huge spectrum of colours within white light. And also devised that violet light, i.e. this end of the spectrum, travels slower than red light at this end of the spectrum when travelling in glass. The critical angle will tell us the point at which total internal reflection will take place. If we have our ray box shining light into a glass box, as we start to rotate and increase the angle of instance, we'll notice that the angle of refra refraction is increasing. Okay, remember the angle of refraction here will be coming out of the glass. However, at a certain point, the light is no longer refracted and is now instead reflected still following the law of reflection. The critical angle is the angle at which all light is totally internally reflected. To calculate the critical angle we can use Snell's law. So remember this only works when light is going from an object of high density to low density, so from glass to air. Therefore N1 must be less than N2. When this is the case, we can say that the angle of refraction is effectively 90 degrees. So the equation becomes sine 90 equals n1 over n2 times sine of the critical angle. Here's an example showing you how to calculate it. So how is refraction used in optical fibres? <clears throat> optical fibres, you might know them from communication, so for your fibre optic broadband, they're also used in medicine and as sensors and for lighting effects. They use total internal reflection to carry beams of light over huge distances. There are three key parts to an optical fibre. The core, which is where the light is. The cladding, which prevents the light escaping the core and a protective plastic jacket which can further prevent light leaving and also protect the fibre as a whole. So the core is usually made of glass or plastic. Okay. In order for total internal reflection to occur, the cladding must have a refractive index lower than the core. Otherwise, the light could simply pass through the cladding, hit the jacket and you would lose the light. That would mean you would lose data or information.